Uh, here in the Midwest, off stage at the Longhorn, McCoy Tyner en route, and at the moment, he's behind the keyboard of a, looks like a Steinway, is that right? It's uh, Yamaha. Yamaha. How about the merits of Steinway, Yamaha, and uh, those pianos, McCoy? Well, it's really strange, but I think a lot of it has to do with the instrument itself, you know. I think by and large, uh, Steinway seems like it has, uh, it takes the number one spot in terms of piano. Uh, although I think Yamaha is improving a lot, you know. And uh, Baldwin, of course, is a very good piano. Too. So, but but so, so, what, so what you you get is a um, is the individual piano type of thing. You know, if you can run into a Steinway, that's not so good. You run into a Baldwin, that's great. And, you know, it's like that type of thing, you know. Isn't that a, a unique situation? You look for that one single instrument that was produced with a certain care and somehow or another it all came together properly. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, it, all has, it has a lot to do with the technician that puts the instrument together. You know, I think that makes the difference. You know. Have you ever met uh, some of the technicians in the factories? I went to the Yamaha factory when I was in Japan in, uh, I think, 1966. It was interesting, you know, to watch how they put it together, you know. It's really a long process, and uh, I think that's what makes each instrument. It's like, I guess, uh, somewhat like an automobile. makes you, makes each one different. You know, is uh, you can't make a two pianos the same. I don't think. <laughs> I think each one is different. You know. It's really not an assembly line project, is it? No, I don't think so. And I think uh, when it's not looked at and it's not taken in that particular light, I think that uh, it, uh, it's a better instrument comes out of it. You know. When I was in the, at the factory, I tried about, I guess, about 25, 30 pianos, and I found this one that was really excellent. And uh, so that goes to show you that, you know, you, even after hundreds of pianos, you may come up with one or two that are really top-notch, you know. Was that how you selected your instrument that you bring with you on concert and location? Well, uh, most of the time they rent because it's uh, very difficult to uh, transport a piano. Some some people do, I think, uh, maybe Van Cliburn or somebody like that uh, may carry his own piano. But in my particular instance, uh, it's a little uh, cheaper to uh, rent one uh, on location, you know, in, in the general area, you know. So this is a rental piano, you know. But it's nice. It's a nice instrument. You know. McCoy Tyner, thank you very much. In brief, we've been looking at the keyboard and the selection of it and uh, some of the chances that pianists, whether they be concert artists in the field of the symphony and the chamber music or in the world of jazz, take when they try to uh, locate with an instrument and a performance. I'll be back with uh, McCoy Tyner in just a few minutes. I'd like to ask him something about uh, the world of concert music. McCoy Tyner over a cup of coffee in the Midwest uh, in Minneapolis with St. Paul just across the river. McCoy, in listening to you interpret um, Duke Ellington just a few minutes ago, I uh, sort of free-formed and uh, let my fantasies take me and you to a concert hall. And I wondered about your thoughts concerning the symphony orchestra and uh, the medium of the piano and uh, you know that very lush and large string section and the oboes and the reeds and the brasses and have you had some thoughts concerning the symphony medium uh, yeah well i just did an album with strings and i used uh, some people from the san francisco symphony and uh, some local people and also we imported some string players from new york and I had a, we had a harpist and uh, some uh, woodwinds hubert laws was playing and uh, Ron Carter and Billy Cobham, quite a few, a couple of jazz people who were in the mixture of the uh, concert uh, people. And it came out very good. I was very happy about it. Yeah. What was some of the program material, the, the compositions? Yes. Uh, one piece we, we played the night uh, was, uh, tonight was recorded with, with strings, you know. That's called Fly With The Wind. I think that's the title of the album, you know. It's my uh, first all string album, I think, you know. So I'm very happy about it, you know. Looking forward to sharing it with uh, listeners to Minnesota Public Radio. With regard to you, uh, the symphony orchestra and the piano, uh, have you any ambition to perform any uh, composer's works? Or have you, and secondly, have you ambitions to uh, compose for the medium and perform? I'd like to compose more. For, for strings, I think it's uh, I think it's beautiful. I think they're beautiful, you know. 
and uh, it's, a, it's sort of departure for me, uh, sort of a, a different type of setting. Uh, I've, in the past, I've used, uh, you know, horns and what have you, and uh, so this would be something different for me. And I'd like to compose more material, more or less original material, you know. I think I think I have uh, some talent along those lines if I just develop it a little bit. I think by developing it is by doing, you know. So I'd like to work on that, do more work for strings. You know. It sounds like an exciting future for you. And uh, listening to you this evening, uh, it certainly uh, it certainly uh, outlined somewhere out in that spectrum, the sound spectrum. You could see <laughs> uh, the door opening for the symphony orchestra. Uh, who are some of the composers among classical composers that have influenced you? Uh, any in particular? Well, I like uh, orchestration-wise and, and composition. Stravinsky, I think, has been, uh, you know, I really like and enjoy listening to his work. And Debussy, of course, we, you know, I uh, enjoyed those two. When I was very young, I had a chance to uh, sort of get uh, sort of a varied background, a varied uh, uh, type of musical uh, exposure, you know, in terms of, uh, of uh, say, Debussy and Stravinsky when I was very young. And I've uh, continued over the years to really appreciate their work, you know. McCoy Tyner, thank you very much for sharing with us your feelings about not only Stravinsky and uh, Debussy, but uh, your feelings about your future, the symphony, and uh, possibly projects in that area. It's all stand for McCoy Tyner between uh, concert performances and just a moment to uh, review some old dates and recording studios with him simply because they lead us to two really giants uh, as performers. McCoy Tyner stands for soloist, composer, conductor, leader, and accompanist, and there's an art too. And somewhere out in the distant past, John Coltrane, McCoy Tyner, uh, some of your observations of John. Well, John was a personal friend as well as uh, uh, the, the leader of the group that uh, really reached his peak, I think, in the 60s, and uh, was one of the greatest experiences in my life, you know. And I think uh, working with John was really a pleasure for me. I learned so much, and uh, I really give him the highest respect, you know. I think he did a lot for the music world, you know. There was also uh, a voice that uh, is practically undiscovered in the music business, uh, mainly because uh, we have uh, lived in such a fad pop world. I think of the artistry of Johnny Hartman, and there was the team of McCoy Tyner, John Coltrane, and then there was Johnny Hartman. Yeah, that's right. Uh, John uh, met Johnny Hartman, I think, in Dizzy Gillespie's band way back. Uh, I couldn't pinpoint the date, but... Uh, John was with uh, Dizzy's band for a while. I think Johnny Hartman was with the same band at, during the same period. And uh, I think he, John had a love for singers, you know, and as a matter of fact, he used to say that if he could sing, he, he didn't know whether he, whether he could, would play or not, but he really loved singers. And he played his horn like a, like, like a singer would sing. So uh, and he came up with this idea of doing this day with, uh, with Johnny, which was my first album a recording with, uh, with, with a singer, you know. and. Uh, I enjoyed it tremendously. It was very relaxed, and Johnny was, was very professional and, and very beautiful singer, and uh, I enjoyed it. It was, great. it was a great date for me, you know. McCoy, those were classic recordings, and unfortunately, some of them are out of print, and we're looking for the uh, age of reissues to catch up with McCoy Tyner, John Coltrane, and John Hartman. Thank you very much for your offstage comments. <laughs>